My name is Dr Dawn Harper. I'm a GP with a particular interest in family and women's health. Eczema is one of the commonest conditions that I see in general practice. We know that around one in five kids and one in ten adults suffer with eczema. Now the good news in that is that most children will grow out of it, but it can be quite distressing. Eczema basically is a combination of dry and inflamed skin. When skin gets dry it tends to get itchy and we scratch, we make the inflammation worse. I'm often asked about the difference between eczema and dermatitis and to be honest the two terms can be pretty much used interchangeably. The most common form of eczema that we see is something called atopic eczema and that's the eczema that runs in families. So if your parents suffered you're more likely to and if you did your children are more likely to. It's often associated with hay fever and asthma. The important thing about eczema and managing eczema is to make sure that you keep your skin as hydrated as possible. This will sound strange but actually one of the first things I ask parents of eczema sufferers to do is to get rid of their soap. Anyone with any skin condition tends to overwash, it's a natural reaction, you want to clean it all up but actually if you use soap you will dry up the skin and what I would urge anyone to do is to swap their soap for a simple aqueous non-perfumed cream. Now it won't lather so well but it will keep the skin beautifully hydrated and will go a long way to keeping the eczema under control. Another problem that I am often confronted with is using steroid creams. If they're used responsibly they are perfectly safe and they will do much more good than harm. By using steroid creams responsibly, what I mean is we use the weakest strength we can for the shortest duration possible. And I always tell people to use it sparingly. Now my problem is one person's idea of sparing and another's would be quite different. So as a rough guide, I say use the area of steroid cream that would cover the tip of your finger to cover an area of skin twice the size of the palm of your hand. And that will just give you a rough guide about really we do mean use it quite thinly. And if you're using it like that, and as soon as the redness and the inflammation has gone, you either step down to a weaker cream, or if you're on a very weak one, you can stop altogether, then you won't come to any harm in using steroids for your eczema. Lots of parents ask me about diet and eczema. And certainly some children do find that their eczema flares with dairy products. If you really believe that dairy products may be flaring your eczema, it is certainly worth excluding them for a couple of weeks. You will know within a couple of weeks if that's made a difference and if it has, rather than leaving them out of your diet totally, it is worth re-challenging oh, your system here. just gently, one product at a time, to see whether you can tolerate some of those products. If your eczema really does genuinely flare again badly and you are considering cutting out dairy products long term, then I would say please, please do talk to a dietitian. We need a balanced diet and particularly if it's a child. The most common form of eczema is a genetic thing. It's something that you are prone to from your mum and, or, and or your dad. There are, however, other forms of eczema. We uh, talk about something called contact dermatitis and that is um, often seen around buckles from belts or from jewellery, common triggers are something like nickel and sometimes with something like that simply just removing that trigger, not wearing that belt anymore will be enough to, to cure the problem. Another common one that I see particularly in people like hairdressers or people who use a lot of detergents is an allergic dermatitis where people become sensitised to either hair products or detergents, something that they're using all the time. Now of course that can be difficult if that's your job. Uh, wearing gloves as, far as, as often as possible will help, using emollients as much as possible will help. But it's also, you've also got to be careful not to let your skin sweat too much in latex gloves. So sometimes it's worth just wearing soft cotton gloves underneath a rubber glove so that your, your skin isn't sweating. What I find particularly with young kids is often they will wake in the night and they are scratching before they are really fully awake. Uh, so keeping nails really short, just simple practical things like that can make a difference and wearing mittens or cotton gloves so that you really can't get a hold on your skin and rip yourself to shreds before you're aware that you're doing it can help. Extremes of temperature generally are not good news for an eczema sufferer. Being very hot and sweaty or getting very cold can actually cause a flare so trying to keep the environment that you're in as neutral as possible temperature wise is a good thing. Researchers have done some fascinating work on looking for a gene 
that seems to be defective in eczema sufferers. But at the moment we have no cure for eczema, so it's a case of managing the symptoms. And one thing that I see a lot of is people who are eczema sufferers who find that actually when they're under periods of extreme pressure or stress, their eczema flares. So although it's not a direct cause, it is certainly an exacerbating factor and if you're an eczema sufferer you just need to manage your stress levels. If I had a flare-up of dermatitis or eczema, I wouldn't be frightened to use a steroid cream to get it under control. But what I would do is I would invest in industrial doses of aqueous cream or emollient. I would throw everything perfumed away and I would make sure that my skin was really well hydrated at all times.